hey guys, when I started working on my new Wave State sound set, I, uh, which will be released by the way very soon, I discovered a really cool feature that I also started using quite a lot on this upcoming sound set and maybe even you guys know already about it. I made different key zones on one single layer with the help of the key track function. three keyboard zones per layer with this little helper. It is really crazy what you can create with that. So, uh, oh, and it even works with sequences, by the way, which is very interesting. Okay, the first thing we want to do is looking for the right bass sound. And for this, we go into the multi-sample page or the multi-sample window and search this Thor bass sound from Synth Guru. It's an internal multi-sample by the way and it sounds like this. And take a look at this in the setup page. Um, make sure that this is on poly, otherwise the split stone function the right way. Okay, let's go to the Synth page where you can see the filter. I want to just make it a little bit darker, add some envelope modulation and make the attack a bit faster. That sounds good. Something like this. Now I add the second keyboard zone and that should be a pad. Okay, I go to the pad category and choose the bright pad, this one. It's also an internal waveform. And of course we can't hear it yet because we have to define a key zone first. And for doing that we use the filter key track. The keyboard tracking function is actually nothing else than relating a certain value to a predefined keyboard range, zone, and that's what we're doing here. We relate different multi-samples to different keyboard zones that we define. Okay, let's put all these parameters to zero, except the last one, the, the high level. And this we put up, we turn up all the way. So this last line here, it defines the beginning of our new keyboard zone. So let's move this a little bit to the left. And this last line, let's put it on C sharp. So let's say here starts our new keyboard zone. Okay, in the next step, I have to tell the sample lane that he should move forward to the next multi-sample as soon as I touch a key in our next keyboard zone. You see? Guys, if you like my video, hit subscribe and the notification button because that will definitely help me to create a lot more of this kind of videos. By the way, if you are interested in more wasted sound sets, I created this. sounds of the 1980s synth pop hits and this one.
80s pop hits with patches for songs from Toto, Chaka Khan and Michael Jackson and another one. Sounds of the Trevor Horn era. I will put all those links into the comment section of this video. And now let's go back to the three layers, uh, to the three keyboard zones. Sorry. For doing this, I click on sample here, then click again on this start step. You see on the on this knob, add a modulation. Go to the generators category and click on filter key track and then I put this up to the right and I have to repeat the step for all these four buttons. Go to end step, filter key track, next one generators, filter key track to the right and the last one and modulation uh, filter key track to the right and ta-da! Just defined our new key zone. Woohoo! And now we adjust the cutoff frequency for that only for that keyboard zone. So I go to the window where you see the filter and I click on cutoff, add a modulation, and again I go to generators and filter key track. And look now when I turn this up the cutoff frequency opens. Yeah, that's good. It's a little bit brighter. Cool thing. Eh? And I also want to adjust the amp envelope. I want to have a longer attack. So I click on attack and go again to this plus sign at a modulation generators filter key track. You know the drill. And watch what happens to the attack only on this keyboard zone or in this keyboard zone. And now I want to have it a longer release too. Click on release, add modulation and generate it again, filter key track. And I turn this up and watch what happens. The wonder of technique. Let me add some delay, some cross delay, which is my favorite. I damp the bass frequencies a bit, make the pad a bit softer. The next step is we want to create, of course, the next keyboard zone, the third one, because we love the challenge. So I add another multi sample, and this could be a lead sound, for example. And I choose the lead NG1. That sounds promising. And now we use the amp keyboard tracking for creating the last keyboard zone. Wow. And look, because our filter keyboard track function is already being used, I go into the amp section of the key track and this we use for our third key zone. It's the same procedure as every year and we turn everything to zero except the high level, which we turn up completely and again we 
use the last line to define the next key zone, the beginning of the next key zone. Let's take C5 here. Yeah, that's that should be enough. Which is our last octave actually on the wave state. Okay, we go to the center lane again. And you know the drill. Click on the start step, add a modulation and go now to the amp key track. And I turn this up completely. It says two now because it now goes to the last multi-sample in our sample lane. And we have to repeat this step, of course, three more times. Go to the end step, generators, amp key track, turn this up, loop end, generators, amp key track, and all the way up. And voila! The birth of the third keyboard zone. Okay, let's make this multi sample a bit louder. Look now, the release time is a bit too long in this lead sound. So for so for changing this, I go to the amp envelope section, click on release. Add modulation, generators, amp key track, and I turn this to the left. I increase the release level, and look what happens. And you see the the string keyboard zone still has the longer release, and you can see it very good here in the in the animation of the um, uh, of the envelope. See how this changes? Okay, let's add a modulation to the lead sound, a pitch modulation. To do this we go into the synthesis page, click on LFO in the pitch modulation section and I choose the, saw, the source and this, of course, is the amp keyboard track. And now I turn this up a bit, just a bit. We did it. Three keyboard zones in one layer. Yes! Amazing, isn't it? Imagine you could make up 12 different key zones on your wave state, which would give you a lot more dimensions to create your own patches. Guys, that's it from me for today. If you like this video, no, we had that. We had that. <laughs> that's it from me for today. I hope you like the video. That's what I wanted to say. And I Hope to see you in my next video.